Thank you. So thank you all for coming to this talk. I'm very excited to be here. Before we begin, I would like to thank our sponsors. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Basically, I managed to hack into these uh, organizations, and some of them did uh, offer us generous bug bounties. And let's see how we did it. Hmm? Oh, sorry. It's on? Not yet. Cool. So this is the organization I managed to hack. <laughs> it's more impressive right now, I guess. Uh, so let's see how I did it. So first of all, my name is Yorona Vital. I'm a security researcher at Palo Alto Networks. I have about 20 years of experience in the cybersecurity space. Started off as a developer, then moved to be a security researcher, where I've done vulnerability research, mobile security, bug bounties, and many other cool stuff. In the past few years, focus on uh, CI-CD security. First at CIDR, the creator of the OWASP Top 10 CI-CD security, uh, which was acquired by Palo Alto Networks. I've been working there ever since. Uh, last year was the year, exactly one year ago, I gave a talk called Actions Have Consequences, the Overlook Security Risk in Third-Party GitHub Actions. And one of the concepts I raised over there is the permissive nature of the GitHub Actions pipeline and how very few organizations do manage their pipeline permissions. And today, we are going to see the consequences of not managing your pipeline permissions. So the agenda for today is a new novel attack that I found against public repositories on GitHub. Basically allowed to run my, uh, my malicious code into your devices, even the ones in this very room. We are going to see some demos, and of course we end our talk with mitigations and takeaways. So GitHub Action, in a nutshell, is a widely used CI-CD platform by GitHub, basically code execution as a service enable you to build, test, and deploy your code. And because it's doing a lot of integration with your cloud provider or Slack or Jira, it needs secrets. So a lot of secrets is going on over there. And GitHub Actions allows you to upload artifacts as part of your pipeline. Now, these artifacts are not packages. They're not like the formal binaries. They're mainly designed to share data between jobs, or for developers to being up, able to persist data in, a, in order to debug the pipeline afterwards and stuff like that. Now this example here is um, an artifact from Firebase uh, from, by Google. And uh, if, the, uh, if the repository is public, then the artifact is public and well, as well, and you can download it. So I had this hunch of uh, doing secret scanning on these artifacts because they are being compiled at a very sensitive environment. Uh, and I haven't heard any chatter about it, anyone that does that. So I decided to take the most popular styled repositories on GitHub and try to scan them for secrets. And it worked. And I even have a name for it. I called it Artipact, which is artifact uh, packed with secrets. I found various secrets for various cloud providers like ClusterFM, DigitalOcean, Kodkov, GitHub. And I did found some personal access token, which uh, the users use to manage their repository, push code, etc. cetera. Uh, but that is not the focus. I did found additional tokens. These are belongs to GitHub. A, a GitHub token and Actions Runtime token. And this token used by the pipeline. It's not like the... Uh, previous token we saw. It's explicitly used by the pipeline to interact with the repository, and we will cover them in a minute. So the way things work in the action, every time a workflow starts, an ephemeral short-lived token called GitHub token created, and this is how the pipeline can interact with the repository, clone the code, push code, and do stuff like that. Now, the permissions of the GitHub token is basically up to you. You can configure it inside your, your YAML pipeline, like this. And if you don't, the default configuration from the repository will kick in. As for the Actions Runtime token, it's a different type of token. You can uh, use it uh, to uh, access the cache system to upload a new uh, artifact or get new crash entry and stuff like that. 
Now, because secret scanning involves with a lot of false positives, I wanted to be sure these tokens are the real deal, they are legit. So I decided to dig in and try to find out how they ended up in the artifacts from the begin with. So I quick, quickly find out the, the immensely popular action checkout. I think it's the number one action on GitHub. It used to store the, the credentials, persist the credentials, the GitHub token inside the local Git folder uh, by default. This is the base 64 representation of the GitHub token. And on its own, it's not a problem, but combined with the fact that a lot of users simply check out their code and upload the entire directory, including the hidden Git folder, that's a problem because your token is leaked. Sorry. Moving on, another problematic pattern I have noticed is that user that used the super popular, the super linter, which is a popular secret, um, sorry, uh, code linter, which is supported by many languages, it used to print the entire environment variables to logs. And when it comes to the context of CICD where secrets are being loaded as environment variables, probably not the best idea. And these logs were uploaded as artifacts as well. And uh, I reported this behavior to the maintainers of the superlinter, and this behavior was fixed. So now, it's the favorite part of my work, hacking. I got a lot of tokens, different kind of tokens. Let's try to use them. But quickly, I found out there is a problem, because during the time of my research, Artifacts were only available after the workflow has ended, which means the GitHub token already expired, so by the time I tried to use it and push code, I always got the same error over and over again, 401, uh, because again, the token is invalidated and there's no way I could win, win this race condition. It was rigged, basically. So from the majority of tokens I got, I lost I lost the majority of tokens from the tokens I got. I still got the actions runtime token. And moving back, this is the, the decoded part of the JWD token. I have noticed the expiration time of this token was six hours, which is plenty of time to commence an attack. So this is what I did, a deep dive into the upload artifact action. I wrote code that wraps the logic of the upload artifact. I traced a victim's workflow. I remember I have six hours to do so. And swapped artifact with a malicious one. And let's see a cool demo of doing exactly that. So on the right, you can see I'm tracking the, uh, the workflow. I've downloaded an artifact. This is, by the way, a real attack. This is a project called Schema Caller, a real project on GitHub with many stars. And I've noticed the action landing token was leaked over there inside the artifact. So I wrote a nice POC that downloads the uh, artifact, extract the token, and use it. And I have swapped the artifact. You can see, I, remember, I don't have any permissions to this repository. And just like that, I replace, replace the artifact with a malicious one. Now, <clears throat> just a second. Now what's the meaning of this attack? Basically, I could achieve an RCE in this way, remote code execution, because if you remember, I told you that uh, artifact is used to share data between jobs, so a job that tries to download this artifact, which can be binary, of course, and execute it will get compromised. The same way developers trying to uh, consume the artifact and uh, try to see what's going on in, the, in their pipeline will get hacked as well. Now this time I was pretty happy uh, from achieving this RCE, I managed to use uh, the, the actions runtime token, but then something truly ha magical happened. Um, 
as I was going through the GitHub change log, this is something I do very often, I have noticed they have done a complete overhaul to the Artifacts v4, and now the Artifact is available as soon as it is uploaded by the job, and uh, I didn't have to uh, basically wait for the workflow to end. That means I have an opening for race condition, right? So I need to do the following. To trace uh, workflow triggering, I identify the exact moment the Artifact is available, download the artifact, extract token, and create a branch. Now why create a branch? Because I wanted to prove I have write permissions, and uh, create branch, and obviously I didn't want to push malicious code, and create branch does require write permissions, so th this is exactly what I needed to do. And I needed to do all of the above under two and a half seconds. You see the little animations, that's exactly two and a half seconds, um, because that's the time between the Artifact is available and then the job dies, which means the token is invalidated. But sadly, I was nowhere near to win any race condition. I simply wasn't fast enough because the downloading the artifact took a lot of time. But then I had this really cool idea of why not using GitHub Actions as an attack infrastructure because I was able to be much closer to the target. It can be triggered remotely, which is something I needed and it offers much lower latency and faster downloads. So I did exactly that and wrote an offensive GitHub workflow. I present the repo repel and basically all I needed to do is to point this guy towards a potential repo and wait for results. And this is the attack flow. I needed to monitor pipeline triggering, so I wrote a software that tracks when the pipeline is triggered. Pipeline can be triggered by uh, a contribute to contribute code or uh, or a nightly build or something like that. The pipeline uploads the artifact. I need to download the artifact, use the GitHub token, in my case, create a branch, and six by the time the, the uh, job ended, then the token invalidated, I don't care because I managed to use it. And as a bonus, because this attack was fully automated, I sent a Telegram message to myself, so I know something has happened. And it worked. Soon enough, I got a lot of these messages, meaning basically that the repo repo has managed to compromise the repo. This is my favorite one, by the way, of me doing the dishes. And this is the first race I won against uh, Project Claire by Red Hat. I've managed to create a branch called Impala. It's a very popular container scanning. Uh, it has 10K stars on uh, GitHub. Uh, just as easily, I could have pushed malicious code. And let's see a cool demo of the real attack against Claire. So on the bottom screen, I have the uh, software that tracks the pipeline triggering. In this case, it was a nightly CI. On the left side, we can see Project Claire. I did wake up at uh, 4 a.m. to record this. I do appreciate the effort. And on the right side, we can see the repo repair workflow, waiting for the artifact to be available. In a few seconds, okay. So the repo repo download the artifact, created a branch, used the token, and you can see by now the job has ended. That means the token is invalidated, but I managed to use it nonetheless. And let's see the branch that we managed to create. Cool, so we see the new branch Impala, which of course wasn't part of the repository. So that was cool, but I wanted to win more and more races, and sometimes I lost, depending on the, how big was the artifact. So I did some optimization, some tweaks, like extracting only the files I needed because artifacts were compressed, and sent a lot of requests per second um, to identify exactly when the artifact is uh, available. It was crucial. 
And I did some communication tweaks like disable the certificate verification and remove unnecessary headers. And it got me to win this race against Ubuntu. Uh, it's a component that ships out with every Ubuntu called ADSYS. Uh, it's uh, used to integrate with Active Directory. And I've managed to create a new version of it called Drunk Duck. Uh, trust me, you don't want to download this version. And in the aftermath of this attack, I managed to uh, basically avert a massive supply chain attack. I managed to compromise Firebase by Google, which has 1.6 million projects references on GitHub. Um, as you can imagine, if I take a look at your phone, I'll probably see some apps written with the help of Firebase. We already discussed about Ubuntu. This is a major um, distribution of Linux. Project Lair. Cyclone DX is a fa famous, uh, famous uh, scanner by uh, OWASP, a respectable security vendor. I managed to compromise several repositories by uh, Microsoft, used internally by the, their developers, and AWS OpenSearch, which is a popular service by AWS. Now to the, to the good news, all you have to do to mitigate this attack is basically change one line of code. Instead of using the original upload artifact, you can use a tool I wrote, a GitHub action basically, that's called upload secure artifact. And what I did basically is integrate a layer of uh, secret scanning inside the uh, upload process of the artifact. So if it found any secrets, secrets being uploaded, it will block the upload and fail the pipeline. You can try to use it, it's free. It's free. This is how it looks like. Found GitHub token, fails the pipeline. And some takeaways before we end this talk. I can't stress enough how important it is to reduce your workflow permissions. It can help you mitigate against this attack and many others like command injection, PPE, whatever. So do it. Uh, integrate artifact scanning as part of CI CD. Uh, you can basically use my solution or any other. There are plenty of good open source out there. And uh, as, sec as security defenders, we have to see the big pictures from code to cloud in this case, because often the vulnerabilities will reside in benign features like, like this one. Thank you very much if you have any questions. Any questions? Designed. Yeah, so GitHub basically said it's up to the users not to upload secrets within their artifacts. I think this response is somewhat limited because they can offer secret scanning as they do in other components of their ecosystem, but uh, they don't. They also can uh, change the behavior of the action checkout not to persist credentials by default, which is something that is less known by the users. I wasn't aware until I started this research myself. Um, the actions runtime token variable, how did you find it? Um, so going through uh, logs, I noticed uh, the environment variables and it is lesser known by the way, it's not uh, formally documented this actions runtime token, but once I've noticed it, I start to uh, dig around and see how it is being used. So I, I reversed a little bit the upload action, the original action, and I noticed what is the usage of it? Thank you very much. Thank you.